Oh, when will they ever learn? I don't know how many of you remember or know of that great line from all the stanzas of a Pete Seeger anti-war song, Oh, will they never learn? That was, where have all the flowers gone? But it's a matter of thinking about it today because of the crisis that we face. The fall in the GDP, I don't know if you've noticed that, the crisis in steel, in mining, in agriculture, in manufacturing, let alone the collapse of the RAND. I'm also very tempted, and I'm going to say so, I told you so. Not me, but because I looked to the analysis by a number of notable international economists who looked at the real economy and who were not blinkered by political ideology or economic ideology. They analyzed the global system and saw what was coming as a systemic crisis. Some of them even warned about 50 years ago and were poo-pooed because obviously it looked as though there was a boom going on forever. Even leading Nobel winners, economists, said this was the end of booms and slumps. 20 years ago, there were even more forward-looking economists who warned this was going to happen. I thought so too. I thought it was imminent. Because one thing we didn't foresee was this lunatic extension of credit to individuals, to companies, to corporations, to governments. It was a massive credit bubble that kept the system afloat. And when it started to deflate seriously in 2008, we have these problems. Now, governments, and our government in particular, did not listen, nor to the opposition parties. And above all else, they didn't do enough even to cushion the effects of this crisis. They could have done that. They could have cushioned it much better. We might not have had as many unemployed, but they could not have stopped, have changed the system, merely cushioned the effects. Because you see, this is a systemic crisis. It's a crisis of a system which we have, I have said many times, and a number of these economists, including people like, like Richard Wolff, have warned time and time again that this is a crisis of overproduction, of overcapacity, and above all, of automation. What it boils down to is we have the only way that this system can continue to survive is by making most of humanity redundant. At the same time, there'll be an ongoing pillage, plunder of natural resources, and who knows what consequences will flow from that. So therefore, change is desperately needed, urgently, but what sort of change and how it can be brought about, those are the big questions. Those are the questions I think you may have some suggestions about. Don't just react with prejudices, with some sort of argue, no argument, but just putting down any suggestion of change. If you support the current system, say why. Say how it could possibly get out of the mess it is in. If you support change, well, let's see what kind of change and how it can be achieved. You know where the comment system is below, and of course you can write to me via editor at fin24.com. These are the big questions. Let's hear from you. Editor at fin24.com. And this is the issue I'm going to be looking at in my Inside Labor column, which you can also read on this platform, Fin24, tomorrow and on Sunday in the City Press. In the meantime, do comment, do suggest, do criticize. It's over to you. And for this week, that's all from me. Cheers.